Hey there, it's Mike Mutzel. I'm the author of Belly Fat Effect. In this video, I'm gonna cut through the myths and the hoopla when it comes to fat loss and share with you the scientific information that will help you be more efficient, better fat burner. So I know it's on the forefront of your mind. My inbox is loaded with marketing messages about fat loss and so forth. And I just wanna give you the card science. So in order for you to burn fat, you need to do three things. You need to snip up the stored triglycerides and break them into free fatty acids. That's called lipolysis, that's step one. Step two, you need to mobilize these free fatty acids, either from muscle tissue, because your muscle does store fat, it's called intramyocellular lipid deposition, but when we talk about really weight loss, we're talking about burning fat uh, stored from the adipose sites, the adipocytes, and so we need to mobilize these free fatty acids from in the capillary network to our muscle tissue. Let me pause right there. This is so, so important. We forget about the mobilization of free fatty acids. And one of the adaptations linked with regular, consistent exercise, high intensity exercise, medium intensity exercise, both of, both of those forms are beneficial, that increases capillary density. Okay, so capillary density is so, so important for uh, making sure that the fat that we snip in lipolysis makes it to where it is burned. And it's burned inside an organelle, a cell within a cell in your muscle tissue called the mitochondria. So, so important. 10% of your body weight is from all these mitochondria. And so what we need to understand too along those lines is the more lean muscle mass you have, the more mitochondria you're gonna have. The more mitochondria you have, the more fat you can potentially burn. Now we can get into details of you know, mitochondrial transcription factors and free fatty acids and carnitine and all that, but just let's keep it simple. You want lean muscle mass because muscle contains mitochondria. So let's go back to step one, talk about how we can optimize step one, step two, and step three. Step one, lipolysis. When you exercise, you create that demand, your adrenal glands are going to release adrenaline and noradrenaline. These are two hormones that are associated with the stress response that are critical for fat loss. I know that we think about that stress as being a bad thing, generally yes, but during exercise it's a good thing. Without these two hormones you couldn't burn fat, no kidding, because these hormones activate a receptor called the beta adrenergic receptor. This is critical. You need to activate the beta adrenergic receptor to stimulate the cascade of two downstream hormones or enzymes, hormone sensitive lipase and adipose triglyceride lipase. These enzymes are key to break up those stored triglycerides and free them as free fatty acids because you can't burn triglycerides for fuel. It has to be, you have to get that cholesterol backbone off and you have to take those free fatty acids and put them through the capillary network into the mitochondria. So adrenaline is key, a key step in uh, the lipolysis effect. Now, here are some things that enhance lipolysis, here's what suppresses lipolysis. Omega-3 fats have been shown to increase lipolysis, so just by taking omega-3 fats, you're gonna burn more fat during exercise. Caffeine has been shown to increase lipolysis. So caffeine is a great pre-workout substance. I recommend it in the morning generally. If you take it in the afternoon and evening, it can affect your sleep patterns, which will then have deleterious effects on fat loss. So that's really important as well. Um, what else has been shown to increase lipolysis is doing exercise after fasting. Now, I generally recommend eating before strength training, but if you're gonna do aerobic training for the purpose of fat loss only, I recommend that first thing in the morning and taking caffeine on an empty stomach. Studies have shown that the adrenaline response is higher, the receptor density of the beta adrenergic receptor on muscle tissue and fat tissue is higher, and the levels of free fatty acids in the blood are much higher if you do training on an empty stomach. So, particularly for ladies, I think this is important. And studies have shown this, that when women do cardio first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, they burn fat better. Things that suppress lipolysis, alcohol. So I know this is uh, not good news for some of you that like your red wine or like your beer, vodka, whatever it may be. Alcohol suppresses lipolysis. So be moderate in your alcohol consumption. Beta blockers, so this is a blood pressure lowering medication. Uh, it's used in various cardiovascular issues like mitral valve prolapse and so forth. So there are some real serious conditions where you can't get off beta blockers. But if there's another blood pressure lowering medication that you can switch to, talk to your doctor first, maybe a calcium channel blocker, maybe an angiotensin receptor blocker, an ACE inhibitor might be better for you, you know, if you do struggle with body weight issues. Now let's talk about the second major important component. That's, we've been talking about lipolysis or the snipping of the stored fats. Let's talk about transport. 
capillary density is so, so important, and we tend to forget about that. That's a major adaptation linked with regular, consistent exercise. Things that can improve capillary function would be diosmin, uh, micronized diosmin and hesperidin. So you can get flavonoids. Look for that if you Google um, Daflon 500 or you know compounds like that, very, very beneficial uh, to improve capillary function. Let's talk about the mitochondria. So things that can improve mitochondrial function, because remember, after those free fatty acids are transported through the capillary network, they make it to our muscle tissue, they're gonna get inside the muscle tissue in the mitochondria and get burned. We need things like carnitine. Carnitine will help with the transport of these free fatty acids to be burned inside the uh, electron transport chain and so forth under a process called beta oxidation. So that's really important. So carnitine, beta alanine can be helpful there. Creatine can be helpful as well. Alpha lipoic acid. So studies have linked uh, consistent use of alpha lipoic acid with increased mitochondrial function and greater fat loss. So Two studies out of Europe show this. They used higher levels of alpha lipoic acid than you might be accustomed to. 800 milligrams was one study, 1600 milligrams was another, so a controlled release format might be more beneficial. Um, and other things that may enhance mitochondrial function would be various botanicals like berberine has been shown to enhance mitochondrial function, resveratrol, quercetin, coenzyme Q10, these are all nutrients as well that can help with that, but also just regular consistent exercise. The more muscle mass you have, the greater mitochondrial density you have, and um, you need to push your body a little bit, stress your body. So that's the true science. There's no you know, pseudoscience there or any quick fix pill. You need to actually do the work to cause the adaptations inside your body to be a more efficient fat burner. But again, avoiding alcohol, doing cardio on an empty stomach, taking omega-3 fats, berberine, alpha lipoic acid, quercetin may help the lipolytic effect and also help the mitochondrial density and capillary network. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to type them in below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to learn more about fat loss and how your gut bacteria get involved, you can hop on over to bellyfateffect.com. I have some free videos and ebooks for you as well. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.